Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys. This, I mean, always about how to use your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac to work on writing, to help you with the business of writing, to get more writing done, all of that. In this case, this particular one, it's going to be mostly concentrating on the Mac and exclusively concentrating on research, how you handle sometimes masses of research that you need to put together. Now, I should say straight of all, sometimes uh, research can be collating a lot of little facts. It can be compiling links. It can be uh, compiling interviews and things like that. We have actually already done one on interviews. Um, have a look in the links below or on one of those card things somewhere on the screen. Unless you're on a TV set, in which case just have a guess. Search for 58 keys. You'll find it. Recording and transcribing interviews. I really like that one. It was very useful. You might do an update sometime. But this isn't that. What this is, is how to handle when your research is uh, just overwhelmingly large. Um, I can't tell you the project I'm on at the moment, I'm afraid. And if you see any documents open on that screen, please yeah, look away for it. The trouble with this particular job is that it involves uh, two and a half, three thousand different scanned documents. I have to work through them, I have to handle them all, I have to find basically the good bits in it. Here's how your Mac, as you've already got it without buying anything else, how your Mac is already set up to help you with this. This is a feature called tagging. Okay, so this is my Mac desktop and here is a folder with some documents in it. I've taken a couple of hundred of the documents and put them into here so you can so you can see what I do with them and I don't muck up the actual research. Uh, there are, I can't remember now if it's between 2,500 and 3,000 documents, but however many it is, you can see the problem. How do you sort through all of this? You read them. What else can you do? But then when you read them, uh, well, what do you do with the material? Am I actually going to remember that, oh, uh, 2019 raw scan 01421 has a good bit in it? Probably yes, actually, but I can do it slightly better. I was going to say slightly betterly. What is my job again? In a better way, which is, for example, what was I just said before, 21. Let's click on that and try doing this. And now see what happens as I go by. That's an iCloud Drive thing. It's just saving it somewhere. See what's happened? As I scroll through now, I can see any of them that have this red thing. I can see what I've read, what don't. And maybe I've decided that red is incredibly important. I must use this in the final project. I could do other things, though. Um, this is about writing, and some of the writing is just extraordinary. I mean, it's so good. But every now and again, you get, it does get a bit sort of purple prosy. So uh, let's say this one, I mean, horrible here. I'm just going to pick out purple. I really, really have to delete all this stuff. It's going to throw the whole project off later. But for now, that's a purple one. And actually, as important as this one is, it's a bit purpley too. So, OK, you can build up these things. Uh, maybe I actually think this one is also green. I'm trying to think of what the example of a green would be. I can't think of anything useful, but I'm going to admit this to you. I ended up using all the colours and I can only remember what red is. Red and purple pros, I'm pretty clear on those. But what was yellow? What was green? It didn't really help, but this did. Uh, that used to be all you could do on a Mac. You could assign colours to things. Later, Apple introduced this thing called tagging. And it's a weird kind of hybrid now. It's like they pretend those colours are these things called tags. Tags are like a small little extra label, really, that you stick on something. And they pretend uh, that red, R-E-D, is a tag, is a label, just as much as the little red dot is. But as well as those, as well as the colours now, because you can use actual tags, actual labels, and call them what you like, not just colour names, you can do this. Uh, so just underneath the colours here, we have tags. I'm going to go, oh, I've done one there, chocolate. I'll have that. Okay, that's nice. That one's chocolate. I think, oh, that, well, clearly, clearly they should all be chocolate, but that'll do. I'll have that. And maybe I can add something else. Um, I, when I have used it in the, the project I'm on, I could do a tag called used. 
Uh, if I'm absolutely certain that I don't need it, I could say delete it. Or if I find a gap, and I'm afraid there are mistakes, when you go through things like this, you find there are, you missed some out, you know, two documents got together, I can put some tag for check again, rescan, something like that. And that's pretty good, actually, except I don't think you can tell that yet, because we look at this list of files here, you can't see any of those tags. You could only see them when I went into, in fact, I'm not sure now which ones I just said were chocolate. Did I say this was chocolate? No, I didn't. <clears throat> there it is now. Uh, you can't see any of those. But if you look slightly to your left, you may notice down here. You, you might not always look at this bit. This is typically what you see. I mean, you might not have set up, you, you have different things in different orders, but there's favorite windows you go to, and then iCloud stuff if you use that, the drives that are plugged into your Mac, and then down the bottom, tags. If I click on chocolate, there you go. There's a list of the three that I set. Now, I know they're showing in the Finder window here, but they're not really there. That is like a list of things. These documents are where they always were. And I can show you that by clicking on one, and you can see down here, that's where it is, that document in that folder on my desktop. My Mac is actually set up to show me like that. Um, it's a finder preference, and I don't really want to go into finder preferences just yet because there's so many we, rabbit warren there. Mine happens to be like that. I don't think the default is, but if yours isn't, you can also do this. You can check on this cog thing and choose show in enclosing folder. And you see, that's back to where we were. The file selected, the file in the folder we had originally. And that would be enough, I think, except oh, there's something much better now. I say there's something much better now uh, because I, I like this, but actually I think it's also necessary as well as better because you saw what happened there if I choose uh, chocolate. Um, you notice how many tags are being shown down here? Uh, for a while, Apple would show them all because they didn't realize you were going to use a lot of them. Um, but in this list here, we don't have red. We have all tags. These are all the tags I've ever used on any project. And even I didn't know it was going to be that many. Uh, but there's purple and red. Let's do red. Okay. I prefer things like this. Okay. Uh, some of that you shouldn't see because it is actually revealing the name of the Projects, so I will just move on a little bit, but that's a, a way to get the red ones. So, okay, you can go to the tags column, you can go down to all tags, you can get this list, and um, you pick the one that you like. Can you only pick one though? I think you can. So, red, yep. Yeah. You can't, for example, pick red and chocolate, and you know there are going to be times you want to. So, instead of all of that, let's open up what's called a smart folder. Right, here's a smart folder. Um, normally you use it for searches and you see it's expecting you to, it's highlighting this search area now, but we don't want that now. We Instead, we want this plus button here. We're adding a filter on the search. And we click on where it says name here. Now you notice these are various things that you can choose to search by, you can look for when it was created, but there's also this nice one called other, Click on other, and oh, I'm not going to scroll through all that. Let's see. yeah, there we go. Let's add tags to the menu. Click OK. And now it's changed it to tags here, but it's also uh, included tags in that drop down menu, so you don't have to keep schlepping through this. But say the tags uh, contain uh, red, and that's instantly done that. But we also do add another plus, and this time tags again tags contains chocolate and you see what's happened uh, when i was just searching for red uh, in the, that particular folder i was getting excuse me when i was searching for chocolate i got three things now i'm searching for red and chocolate i'm only getting those two so you can see how you can slice down your research into something much more manageable and it's not like it's a pain doing all of these things. It's not like you're going to forget. I think you need to do it a couple of times before you remember where things are. But after that, it's fairly obvious. It just is a tedious bit of re repetition every now and again. And we can we can save on repetition. See this button here? Save. 
say red shock, that'll do. And now look what's happened. Here's my usual list of things. This is my familiar window, but down here is red chuck. So actually, let me just show you, get back to the list of all of them, click away and there they all are until I click on red chuck and I've got just the ones I want. Tagging on Mac OS. Really, I think it was invented for writers and researchers like us. So that's tagging on your Mac. I did say it was specifically for the Mac. Tagging does exist on your iPhone and your iPad. In theory, if you tag something on the Mac, you can find it taggily on your iOS devices, but it's not really all that good. It's really a tool for when you're doing work on your Mac, which tends to be you know, like heavy lifting work. My thousands of documents and things. Which reminds me, I said, uh, I'm sorry I can't tell you what the project is yet. I'm kind of burning to tell you, but I can tell you this, as, as well as a difficult research job, I mean, technically and dramatically, all sorts of things to do with it. It's also really personal to me. It matters so much and I, I cannot get it wrong. I cannot lose anything for it. And tagging, even though you have to be disciplined with it, you have to be careful with it, tagging is a way that I can get through this job, get it done and not miss anything, make sure that all the things that matter to me, I do definitely get. So although it takes a little while to get used to tagging, it becomes incredibly useful. And I think it's one of those things that a little time spent now is worth all the effort because of all the time, all the concern, all the worry actually, that it saves you later. It's a funny thing about writing though, isn't it? We just want to write and all of this other stuff gets in the way. I mean, I like this, that we can use a tool to help us do something like that. But writing is about the business of writing as well. And there are things I want to do. I want to talk to you about that will help with that, but they're not part of 58 Keys. Instead, would you mind have a look at my 58keys.com website and click on the writer's mailing list or, or follow the link down below. We're writers. We need to get on with writing. There's a lot we can do. And that's the kind of thing talk about some other projects that are coming up soon. But in the meantime, this is 58 Keys. I'm William Gallagher. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.